from all around your lawn. I'm here to tell you how football is strong. And welcome back, Ed. Dale, if you're going to do that, we're going to uh, <laughs> expose what's going on on your phone there because I know you've got some uh, telephone numbers there we'd all be interested in. We're not going to bring that up again. Anyway, big game on this afternoon. It's a 94.7 match of the round. It's the Bell Post Hill Panthers taking on the Anarchy Ruse. And all of a sudden, this game takes on a game of monumental proportions with the final five still not settled. The fact that's out at the Ring Road Recreation Reserve, Dale, one would think that uh, Bell Post Hill can win this, but they better watch out for the Ruse because they are looking for some finals action. They uh, had an opportunity on the weekend and weren't probably good enough out there at yep. home against the Belmont Lions, but they're going to make their job really hard this afternoon. As I said, they come against Bell Post Hill. They're going to have a forward line, which will really stretch them now because they're going to have Jovanovic in there. We saw Justin Tarr kick last, uh, nine last week, and he's just going to start uh, being that extra string to their bow up forward. <clears throat> And also you've got Brent Gerg, who can also play through their forward line, all go back. But then they've got the blokes like, uh, they're just numerous players that can run through forward line. You know, Furzland goes in there for a while, Pizzano can go through it. It's going to be a great game of football. But Anarchy now have got themselves on the back foot. They've got Bell Post still, they've got uh, East Geelong and Inverley in the next three weeks. They really have to turn one of these games their way. If they can't do that, then it's obviously going to be them that misses out on that final fifth spot, which would be a real disappointment for them because they've really set themselves up with some good early performances. Their full forward line has really got to perform for them. And two blokes that are really important for them is Berg through the middle. We keep mentioning week in, week out. And Dan gives himself up forward. I think he's got to really step up this week. He's got to be a bloke that kicks five or six goals and really uh, sets himself a lot. If they can do that, they'll give themselves a chance. But, you know, Bell Post still at home. It's going to take a monumental effort to beat them, Dick. Justin Tarr, <coughs> great effort last week, uh, kicking, uh, was it nine goals? I think yep. it was. That's a great effort there. Is he uh, going to, obviously, he's going to figure in some of the action again? Yeah, well, look, he was one of those blokes that uh, has been playing reserves and obviously had a, uh, just get himself right, but he's now put himself into the senior side. When they've been, been able to even give blokes a bit of a spell over the last couple of weeks, so with him coming back in, he's that extra tall bloke that they can really go to with a bit of confidence, and he is a great kick for goal, very reliable. So, as I said, you put him and Jovanovic in that forward line with uh, some of their taller blokes. Uh, it just makes it really, really tough. So um, I just don't know how. I think they really stretch the back line of, of the uh, Anarchy Roos because they've got the two Ricket boys will play back there. Um, Parsons will play back there. But they just uh, really fell short last week. Scotty Bowman kicking five goals for Anarchy last week. Uh, he's a big bloke, isn't he? Bowman, no, I think he plays a bit of a, he's a smaller role. I think. Oh, he's is he? Smaller, okay. Yeah, I think so. Scotty Purvis, you probably think. Oh, oh yeah, the big bloke. Big, yeah, that's yeah. Right. So, uh, yeah, look, look, they've got the capabilities of playing some good football, Anarchy, but as I said, they really let themselves down with poor kicking, and mm. we know that that's not going to win you many games. Well, it'll be a fantastic game indeed, and of course it is the 94.7 match of the round, and of course you'll see it all on the highlight package next week, and of course you can tune in to 94.7, the Pulse from 1.30 this afternoon. It'll be a fantastic call indeed with the boys. Now, as I said before, there's another big game on this afternoon. It's out at the Thompson Street, or the Thompson Thunderdome, out at Godfrey Street there, and it is the Tommy Tigers, and they take on the North Geelong Magpies, and the Violet Crumbles, the Magpies. Always a big game, always a big day out there, and of course it is their 1991 Premiership reunion, so everything there for the, North, for the Thompson Footy Club to play for in front of their adoring home crowd. Uh, the Magpies, Dale, as we said before, they've been very disappointing, and uh, this could have been just about a, a game that would have put one of the sides inside the final five. It won't be for North Geelong. They're just playing for pride now, I think, and I, I mean, I love nothing better the Magpies to uh, to beat Thompson because it's always a good thing if they can do that. But Tommy Tigers know just how important this game is, don't they? Too much to play for now, Dick Thompson. Yep. Uh, <coughs> reunion out there, a lot of home crowd uh, support and the ground will be really buzzed because they have that extra atmosphere out there for the game. They were really good last week. As I said, uh, they did get beaten in the last quarter. They did allow Invalid to kick seven goals in two quarters. So probably still need a, bit, a little bit of work done. But realistically, their back line was tremendous. Mm. Young kid Menzies played a really good game through their back half. Clark was good. Yeah, it was good. Uh, as you said, Jackson McLeod, Mitchell Hodson up forward. He kicked four or five goals also. So they've got their targets. Um, you know, they really worked hard through the middle of the ground. I, I really think that they've got themselves in a position now, which at the start of the year they mightn't have thought they could have been in. Um, an opportunity here, I think, to sneak into the top five. And once they get in there, they might be hard to remove. Yeah, I reckon. And of course, they, they probably will play pretty well today, knowing that it is their reunion for the 91 Premiership. And I know big... Big Froggy Richies will be down there, and uh, uh, fabulous Eddie Dare, they'll be all down there, making a bit of a noise. No, Polly Rankin will be there, no doubt. It'll be a fantastic game, so day and game, so uh, <coughs> anybody that's had any association with the Tommy Tigers 
get out there this afternoon to Thompson and you'll have a fantastic afternoon indeed. Another big game on uh, this afternoon. I'm just, uh, just trying to think what, what that, that big game was, Smithy. The other big game on this afternoon is out at the Kevin O'Leary Oval, East Geelong taking on Geelong West. And, of course, as we said before, Geelong West haven't won a game this year and you wouldn't think it's going to have it out at Richmond Crescent, Dave. Well, I'm not too sure how far uh, your mate Lucas Murphy is behind uh, your mate. Two. Two behind. Well, yeah, I, reckon by the, I reckon by the end of the day, he's probably going to be in a dozen in front. So oh. uh, that's the way it could turn out. If we get the conditions that we're looking for this afternoon, it could be a real spectacle out there for Lucas Murphy. So, uh, look, he, he is a good footballer, great lead-up player. Look, their avenues to goal are numerous. Geelong West is just going to have a dirty dog's day. East Geelong, uh, Squab Lake's really got them fine-tuned, especially coming into the finals now. But as we said earlier, it's obviously going to be an East Geelong a bell post still affair, you would think, at this stage. And uh, you couldn't see East Geelong making any mistakes today. If anything, as you said, Dale, it could be a big percentage booster for them. Oh, well, they, get, they, they will finish on top of the ladder with their run they've got coming over the next couple of weeks. So I just can't see anything else beating them. But, uh, yeah, look, they're, they're a quality side. They've got some good uh, spread all over the field. They've got Blase and go into the middle. They run probably 10 blokes through the middle of the ground at different stages during the course of a game, so they'll win easily. And Ricky O'Toole just best on the ground last week. I still can't get over that. Out of the Devil's <laughs> Playground, mate, they had the roller out there. I did volunteer my services to roll the ground for them out there. Cariah taking on Inverley, and, uh, well, Inverley have to win this game as well. They'd better watch out against the Devils. Yes, uh, an important game for them. If they really want to get to the third position on the ladder, they're going to have to win every one of their games and rely on someone to come up and beat the Werribee Central side. Proughton game, too much to lose for Inverley, and they will win the game. Your mob out at uh, Victoria Park, Bannockburn, taking on Werribee Centrals. And, of course, if anything you'd like to do without making finals this year is cause an upset to a side that's inside the final five. There's always a bit of feeling between Bannockburn and Werribee Centrals. They've played some great grand finals over the last few years. And, uh, well, the Tigers out there, Werribee wouldn't want to take you blokes too uh, quietly. Yeah, I suppose, Dick. Werribee are in the finals. They're going to play finals football. But, again, yeah. they can't afford to get lose a game. And to go out there and to play poorly would be a real disappointment for them. Bannock Burn, to their credit, probably not their best side on paper last week, but it just goes to show if you're prepared to have a go for 100 minutes of football, you can win it. So uh, I would think that we're just a little bit too much above the Bannock Burn side. And at Winter Resort, we, the last game for the day, Belmont Lions taking on Winchelsea. Of course, this is their fourth in a row. They're going for the Mighty Lions. Can they do it? Oh, I think they can because it's at home. I'd really like them if they had been at Winchell, would have picked Winchelsea. But yep. uh, they've got uh, pretty good structure now. They've got a bit of confidence behind them now, Dick. So that's an important factor. And again, you know, with the influence of the crowd out there, they're going to be uh, roaring out there at the Lions this afternoon. Big reunion out there as well with Juice Newton out there at Harmony Williams. It'll be a great day indeed out at the Winter Resort. Thanks very much for your company this morning. Thanks, Dale. Have a great afternoon out at the footy today. Oh, I'm looking forward to it again, Dick. I always do. Love, yeah, me. Love my footy. Mate. Let's keep those uh, platters of party pies rocking and rolling, mate. Get out to win the leaf for their uh, roast roll, mate. Man. Abs- absolutely. Don't you worry about it. Thanks for your company again. We'll see you all again next Saturday morning. Bye for now.